Hey everybody, I'm Toby and this is Photorec.tv. Today I want to talk about filter systems. For years I've been a big fan of the Nissi system, but on a recent workshop to Iceland I had the chance to try out two new systems, both of which offer some really compelling features that I want to chat about. But before we dive into a full discussion, I want to share that for years I owned just a circular polarizer. I mean, most of these filter systems that I'm about to share with you allow you to combo some neutral density filters with a circular polarizer. But if you're on a budget and you don't own any filters, just get yourself a CPL. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ND filters give you lots more flexibility over shutter speeds and brighter conditions. But if you're smart about when you're photographing, a CPL filter can take you a long way and its effects cannot be recreated in post. So I'm going to share some specific brand recommendations a little bit later in this video and a short rant about step up rings. Ugh. But before we get to all that, I want to let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I recently added a gallery of some of my favorite long exposure photos to photorec.tv. The drag and drop tools make it so easy to beautifully display your work. You can build a gallery the way you want, and you just duplicate it and add the pictures. It's so easy. Try Squarespace out for free for 14 days, no credit card required, at squarespace.com slash TV. All right, let's start with a slightly less conventional system, the Haida Rear Filters. This is a pack of four ND filters. There's only three in there right now. I'll show you where the other one is in just a second. That costs just $144. That's about the price of one good filter. Now, this pack provides a three, four, six, and 10 stop filter. But right up front, I need to acknowledge that these filters don't work on all lenses. They are mostly designed to be used with lenses that have the bulbous front element, like the Sony 12 to 24. Now, some of these lenses, they come ready to use with the filters, and some lenses require you to swap out the small plastic bit in the back to make it compatible. It's very easy to do. It's a couple of screws. The Hiata website shows you exactly how. I did need to do that with this 12 to 24. It took me about four minutes. As I said, the lenses that support this are usually very wide angle lenses with bulbous front elements, which are typically more difficult and much more expensive to put a filter on. If you follow this channel for a while, though, you might remember that I've reviewed rear filters before. It was part of my IRIX wide angle lens review. Those were little gel filters. They were so fiddly and horrible. These are high quality. I honestly, I think they're made out of glass. Listen, that sounds glass. I should know. I'm making a review. But I'll tell you what. Here's what I know. The quality of them is excellent. And they do go in and out of the holder very, very easily. They're so nice and small. So let's talk about the pros of these real quick. Great quality, incredibly portable. Four NDs in this tiny little case. And honestly, you could pare this case down and make it even a little bit smaller. They are, of course, usable on lenses without front filter threads. And I mean, this is huge because typically these lenses, as I said, are incredibly expensive to put filters on and bulky. Nissi makes some systems. It's very good quality, but it's huge and expensive. Now, there are some drawbacks. You're potentially exposing the sensor every time you change the lens. I say potentially because now we have some cameras that shut the shutter every time you turn it off, so you're not always going to expose the sensor. Uh, but there is, I feel like, a little bit more friction in changing these. You know, there were times where I was in conditions where it might have been a little bit wetter, near a waterfall, for instance, and I thought that the strength of uh, ND that I'd chosen wasn't perfect for the shot, I would maybe not change it because I didn't want to risk getting a bunch of water either on the sensor or on the back of the lens, which also isn't uh, ideal. Uh, another drawback is they're not stackable and there's no CPL filter that you can use in this case. And I'm not saying this happened to me, but if you drop one of these in tall grass, it might take you a few minutes of searching. Just, just saying. Maybe that happened. Maybe it didn't. I will say, though, that these are going to take a fall way better than a bigger front filter. So just keep that in mind. If you have a bulbous front element, these should be in your kit. 
Now let's move on to the brand that I've been using for the last five years, Nissi. This is the latest Nissi kit. It's the V6 Pro starter filter kit with circular polarizer for $4.99. You get a ton of bits in this kit, you can see right here. Now, most importantly, you get a CPL filter that's attached to a filter holder sized for 82 millimeter lenses. But Nissi nicely includes step up rings for common lenses. So it's very likely that right out of the box, this provides everything you need to use on your lenses. You screw on that attachment piece that includes the CPL filter. Then you attach the holder, which is capable of holding up to three filters. In the box, you also get a 10 stop ND and a medium edge graduated filter in the box. I'll be honest, I use graduated filters far less these days. The dynamic range of most of these modern cameras is enough that I can get a single shot or with a little bracketing, I can merge. Now, this does allow the great flexibility of moving that graduated filter up and down. These are 100 by 100 millimeter glass plates, excellent quality, very easily stackable, no vignetting issues at all. Now, let's look at a few additional prices, though. If you wanted to add a six-stop ND, it is going to cost you $160. I think a six-stop ND is great. Ten is a little strong in some cases. Six is, I think, a little bit more versatile. If we wanted to build out a kit that offers everything that the Haida did, we need a three, four, and six-stop. That's $480. So that's $480 plus the original price. So that brings us to $980. Now, that is a little unfair because you do get a very high-quality CPL filter in here and some other bits. And as I mentioned, Nissi does sell a kilter filter kits for bulbous front element lenses, but they are big, bulky, and take even larger plates. Now, let's talk about the pros of the Nissi system. I mean, excellent quality. Very, very flexible setup with easy stacking, use of graduated filters, no vignette issues at all. Uh, and notice that if you already have some 100 millimeter filter sizes, like maybe Lee, they do work in this filter system. Now, there are some downsides. It is a bit bulky, a little pricey, and a little slow, meaning setup. If, if you leave the attachment piece on and leave an ND filter in the holder, it's fairly quick to set up, but if you need to change out filters, it's certainly not as quick as this magnetic system they're gonna look at next. And I just will warn you, you need to double check the attachment each time and make sure you're using the extra security pin. I'm not saying it happened to me, but like the tall grass story, part of the Nissi system might have fallen off and almost fell deep into a gorge. I just got lucky. I mean, the story I heard about. This guy just got lucky. So you just want to make sure it's not something that you want to carry around on the end of your lens uh, because it's very easy to bump off. And then these 100 millimeter glass plates are probably going to crack when they fall. All right, but now let's talk about the Case Wolverine Magnetic Professional Neutral Density Filter Kit 2. This little leather box, $511. At first glance, that seems more expensive, but it does include a CPL filter along with a three, six, and 10 stop ND. This is a magnetic system. So you screw on a thin magnetic ring and the filters pop into that ring. You can stack, you can combine the CPL with an ND. Now there is a chance of some vignetting when you stack, especially on wider angle lenses, but the speed and flexibility of this system is nice. They sell this kit in different sizes. You should buy for your largest lens or the largest lens you think you might own someday and they sell additional magnetic rings, step-up magnetic rings for other lenses. As I said, I have a little rant about step-up rings in a moment, but these are actually different because you're not threading the step-up ring onto the filter, and that's what my rant is about. So hang on, the magnetism, it takes care of that. It's, magnetism is magic. So let's say you buy the 82 millimeter system and you also have a 77 millimeter lens. You could use the standard step up ring with the 82 millimeter magnetic, or you could buy their 70 millimeter magnetic ring and pop it on instead. Now, nicely case also includes a magnetic cap and you could buy more magnetic caps. They sell those individually to slap on each of your lenses. In some setups, it's so thin that you could even keep your lens hood on or if you find that you can't, Case sells a magnetic hood. 
and they also sell filters separately and they do have a graduated filter though of course you have less flexibility in how you use because you can't slide it up or down so the pros of this system it is great quality very fast to use stackable and portable again look at this filter system everything is in this little case now, the cons. Well, the upfront cost is high, but you do get everything that you're probably going to need. It has some less flexibility than the Nissi system, and there is the potential of vignetting, especially again on wider angle lenses, plus the chance, I made a mention of not happening to me, but somebody I know where it fell off, you know, that didn't happen. I'm, I'm not the only person that used these. Uh, Steve Skurich also used these in Iceland, and it never happened to him. Uh, and it never happened to me that they fell off, but I did see a few comments that it happened from other people, especially when you stack. So you do want to be careful again from moving from place to place. And what did happen to me is I noticed they could get bumped off, including the magnetic cap in the camera bag. So uh, when you're carrying around, the magnet seems strong enough that it's going to hold it on, even if you're jarring the camera, although I wouldn't trust it, but it does seem strong enough. However, putting it in or out of your camera bag and leaving the filters on or the case off with a little bump, it seems like they're more easily uh, bumped off. So just keep that in mind. Now, one common complaint, and this is actually kind of across the board with all of these, it's very difficult to tell the strength of the filter, especially the case. It's printed in small text. And well, I'll admit it to you all. I'm now at that age where it takes me a moment to read that. I have to hold it at a certain length. Yeah. So I've got a solution for that in just a minute. So keep that in mind. And finally, if these prices seem high, let's talk about the basics. A basic or a simple high quality screw on CPL filter and a six stop ND can be purchased for 160 and 190. Yes, there are cheaper filters out there, but I generally don't recommend it being a place that you try to save money. Don't cheap out on filters or tripods. I'll say this, if your budget's very tight, I will say that there are more affordable CPL filters that seem to be just fine. Hoya makes one at 109 bucks, and that is for an 82 millimeter. So again, buy for your biggest lens and then use step-up rings to attach to your smaller lenses. Though, as I said, I have a warning about step-up rings. I keep teasing that, don't I? Now, ND filters can be found for very cheap, but I have had more than a few workshop participants excited to tell me how much they saved on ND filters, and then when we use, we see why. Generally, horrible color casts that in some cases just isn't fixable at all unless you're making black and white photos. So B Plus W, Polar Pro, Case, those are all decent brands that I trust to make filters without color cast issues. And I've got a link to those brands, plus a few more in the video descriptions just down below. But now it's time for my rant about step up rings. But before we get that, I want to make sure you know that this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Their sponsorship allows me to make videos like this and their awesome tools allow me to post new content so easily. I run my own website on Squarespace and when I decided to add a gallery of work to photorec.tv a few weeks ago, it was literally a couple of clicks and drag and drop. So easy. And if for any reason you get stuck, they offer customer support. Real people that you can get a hold of that will get you back on track. I also use their awesome marketing tools and analytics. I'm really happy with everything they provide. You can try them out for free for 14 days. Start at squarespace.com slash photorectv to save 10% off your purchase price. They even make it ridiculously simple to add a domain name to your website. Give them a try today. So step up rings. They're great because they allow you to buy one filter for your largest lens and then use a step up ring to use that same filter on your smaller lenses. Here I have an 82 millimeter filter, and with this 60 mil, 67 to 82 millimeter step up ring, I can use this on a 67 millimeter lens. But I'm tired of them because it's so easy for these to get jammed onto the filter. The threads are a little soft, especially on the cheaper step up rings, and it happens on workshops more often than I like. And it's happened to me too. You get the two jammed together almost always were successful in getting them apart, but it is not fun. And if I can avoid the use of these, I will. So just keep that in mind. It's a short rant, it wasn't too ranty, I think. But that's one of the reasons why I like the case system because if you work it out right, 
their magnetic step-up rings solve this issue. All right, let's start to wrap this up. I mean, one thing that I wanted to share was how to know what strength filters you're using without having to hold it out at a certain distance. Well, MindShift Gear makes these really cool filter pouch accessories that have colored slots. So you need to decide what they mean, blue, green, red, orange, I think various strengths. And as long as you put the filters back in the same slots, you know what you're grabbing or what you're getting out of that slot. It works very nicely. This is their slightly larger case that works well for the Nissi system, but then they have a smaller pouch that works well for the case system. So I really highly recommend these filter pouches. They are uh, padded, easy to use, and helpful, which makes a big difference out in the field. All right, and final thoughts. I'm gonna keep using the Nissi system basically because I own it. But if I was looking to start from scratch, the Case Magnetic System is very compelling with its incredible portability, its speed and flexibility. It's very nice. Let me know what filter system you like best. There are some other ones out there that I didn't talk about, like Breakthrough's Magnetic Filter System. They don't have a stackable system. They said that's been coming for years, but they do have some very nice high quality combo filters. So like a six stop and a CPL in one filter, and that's a magnetic system as well. And it is in the realm of affordability as well. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to hit subscribe along with that little bell so you'll be notified of future videos. Links to all of these products I'm talking about are right down below this video. And don't forget to check out Squarespace starting at squarespace.com slash to save 10%. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.